Bonjour, je m'appelle Thomas Heyman. Um, that's as much French as I can muster, yet I work for a French company called Deezer. Um, just to give you a bit of background, I used to actually, actually can't see anyone, but that's fabulous. Um, I used to um, visit this stage on a weekly basis. I used to be um, the program director for the Bachelor Entertainment Management course at AIM. <clears throat> and after I left, I took over a job as a managing director um, for Deezer, um, Australia New Zealand. In my previous life, I'm in a very um, lucky position that I can say that every single dollar I earned in my life since very young age, I earned in music. And um, I worked, as you can tell from my accent, um, I'm an Australian resident, but German, worked for a French company. There's a head fuck for you. Um, <laughs> In my previous life, I worked for um, Sony Music in Germany, and I worked for Sony here, Warners, did my own company in management, um, worked with artists like Rammstein. If we have time, I might tell you a couple of stories there. Um, and I also um, started my own label, The Music Connection. Um, huge mistake. Um, cost me about $20,000. And would I start a label right now? Possibly not. Um, I just recently drove around 2,000 CDs to my local tip and chucked them out. Um, simply because they have no value and all the music, as we know, is in the cloud. Um, the last CD I ever bought um, was around 2006. It was a hot chip. Um, I really wanted to get the record. It was a rainy Saturday. I drove from Paddington to the city to read a record. The streets were empty. I parked the car, walked in the store, paid 30 bucks, walked out at a $90 parking fine. I made a conscious decision. This was the last CD I ever bought, ever. OK, um, enough about me. Um, let's talk about how you can engage with your audience through music streaming and how you can engage with a global audience through music streaming. So first of all, um, just wanted to give you, I think I have to stand here, lovely picture. OK, so let me explain Deezer to you. Deezer, we are a French um, music streaming company, subscription service. And we are a real global company. We're the only streaming company that's actually in 182 countries, which makes us global. Our point of difference is we're actually not only working with algorithms, we're actually working with humans. Meaning, if we are in 182 countries, we actually have 182 humans who breathe and live in those countries, and they spend their whole day listening to music, they're discovering music, and they're sharing that through our platforms. And, um, we started about six years ago in France, and we moved in the UK, Benelux, Germany. And last year, we moved everywhere, including Australia and New Zealand. Um, France being the fifth biggest music market in the world, when I went for my training there in August last year, I noticed wherever I went, lots of Australian bands touring there. I saw posters for Julia Stone. Um, I saw um, Last Dinosaurs. Lots of bands being on tour all the time. <clears throat> In regards to streaming service, it's still a very new um, way of consuming music. I always find when I explain it to people who are 50 or older, they get it the fastest, believe it or not. I just say, mate, it's a jukebox on your phone <laughs> for less than three coffees a month. They sign up immediately. Students so much, not so much, because they can't afford free coffees, and the 10 bucks they have at the end of the week, they possibly rather spend it at the pub. But for those, we also have a free service as well. Um, so we are reaching out to a global audience, 182 countries, and we're reaching out to 10 million active users. Until recently, we are still, and other services as well, we're talking about users, like 30 million. But with most applications, 
what's really only important is the active users, because some people just download it and then forget about it. I've got about 10 apps on my phone that I actually never looked at again since I've downloaded them. So we, for us, what's really important is usage and not only access, but to engage our audience and make them use our service. And we're doing that through our local editors. Um, we have 4 million subscribers. That's actually people paying for the service. So we take in, we bring in money back into the industry. And um, also really important, 25 million tracks. We have 25 million tracks, and they're not only coming from the USA or UK. I worked at major labels for most of my career, and we were slaves of priority lists. Priority lists that were dictated by New York labels, or LA-based labels, or London labels. Mostly of them, 10 artists. And if the label decided that a certain artist is a priority, they were forced down our throat, and we forced them down your throat. And most of the time it worked. But the beauty about music discovery through music subscription is you don't have that gatekeeper anymore. You can discover music from West Africa, from Asia, from Latin America. The whole paradigm has changed, meaning we're taking out barriers. It's up to you what you listen to. And who do you use as a point of reference? You use your friends as a point of reference. You're using your Facebook friends. You're using people that you're following, people whose taste you trust. Even for the internet, we used to have that. I'm, I'm a child of pre-internet, by the way. And I remember the first time I came across the internet was at university and was for researching papers. And um, the internet only really became interesting through social media. First through MySpace, until that went pear shaped then obviously through Facebook. So the connection with your friends through social media is one side, but the real contact with real humans is equally important. The conversations you're having with people about the taste of music um, or what they like, what's the last band you've seen, etc., are very important. Um, now, this is a map of the world. Um, you see in the corner is Australia, big and landmass, very small in population. In our daily job, we are talking a lot to local labels, to artist managers, and to artists. And we're explaining our service to them, your music subscription service. We're helping you to connect with your fans. But we also help you to develop a global audience. And that's when you get their attention. Why do you get their attention? Because if you're an artist in Australia, Australia is too small to make a living. For every Australian artist, the holy grail is international success. What I have seen in my career with the different labels, always found that the artists or the managers were very much focusing on the USA and on the UK. And I always talk to them, you know there's other countries in Europe as well? There's France, there's Germany, there's Poland. Hey, there's lots of people living in Latin America as well. And it's really important to understand that. And we'll talk about it in a moment. We give you the tools to find out where you can access your audience and how to find them. Because there's life outside Australia. I always used to say to my students here when they asked me, so what kind of career progression will I have when I finish at AIM? What's the future holding for me? And I said, well, you could become, you know, a very successful artist manager or maybe a landscape gardener. Um, no, seriously. I said, the career progression, very easy. You do your degree and then you get a job in Australia. Australia is a great place to start a career in the music industry. Because we're kind of small, it's easy to network, you know everyone, and it's really good to start. But after two years, you get the hell out of here. And it's because you have to. You have to go where the networks are, where the music is, and you have to you know, work on your skills and widen your global network. 
You can always come back and you will be a hero. Once you worked overseas, you come back, you're very employable. And the same goes for artists. There's not a single artist that I have met in Australia who would be happy with just being successful in Australia. You need to think global. You need to reach out to a global audience. And Sounds Australia is doing a fantastic job with their program to help take Australian music to the world. Now, in the digital age, we have this engagement paradox. We're listening to more music than ever before. But the majority of that, to piracy, illegal downloading, or through unlicensed services. And that often happens in dark room, anonymous, with no connection with the artist and his fans. You can even argue with iTunes, same thing. People downloading tracks, the artist gets the royalty statement, but really Apple doesn't share that data with the artist. So it's very much a disconnect. And we also, by the way, I think Music Network published that, we are the worst pirates in the world. <laughs> Bit of a convict history coming through there. <laughs> Too much time. Actually, um, Steve Jobs, I think a couple of years ago, he wrote, if you are a pirate and you're spending time finding the best tracks, you're paying yourself less than the minimum wage in the USA. Keep doing it. You could get a job and make some money and sign up to a music subscription service or keep uh, downloading illegally. So I think all of music subscription services, our mission is, one of our joint mission is to fight piracy. We do in the music industry, we're doing the labels a favor to offer an alternative to piracy. And we're doing that through a superior customer experience music experience and through recommendations and um, through our services. And basically taking the excuse as a way from people who are using um, pirate services, oh, it's really hard to find. It's not hard to find. It's so easy. There's no more excuse to rip off artists. Um, who's pirating music here? No hands up? Oh, there? OK. Um, Please, can you take him on? No. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so people are listening to more music than ever before. There's a disconnect between um, you know, the um, fan and the artist. And you know, the main tragedy, other than the artist doesn't get paid, is really the disconnect. And that the magic connection between artist and um, fan has disappeared. So. These are, we like to think, we're more than a music subscription company. We are, and a discovery channel. We're also a promotional company, and we're helping you to connect, to find fans. To give you a couple of examples, <clears throat> my team recently put together a promotion with a local new and upcoming artist called Spender, who had a guest appearance with a quite well-known artist, Gautier. And at the time we started this promotion, the artist had 1,000 Facebook likes. We are able to push him out to 23 countries around the world, featuring him. Another example, we did our launch event last year um, with Flume and um, Earthboy. We are lucky, we just got Flume before it completely exploded. And we are able to push the live performance out to 23,000 people around the world. As a consequence of that, just on the strength of the music, without knowing the hype around Flume, multiple countries in Europe featured him on our homepage as well. Earthboy, at that night, his likes through Benelux went through the roof. People from Belgium, he's never ever toured in Belgium, commenting that Earthboy dude is great, how come I never heard about him? So it really helped, um, helped him to build um, a global profile. So what we do is connecting the artist with an audience. And we do that through a feature that's quite unique called Deezer for Artists. And what we supply, we're giving a login to our back end, to the labels and to the artists. And we're sharing 
data and we're sharing tracking. Meaning if you are doing a promotion and we're setting something up and that promotion reaches into other markets, we share that information in real time with the artist. So you can use that data to communicate with a potential agent in the UK when you're trying to pitch for their business and when you're trying to set up a tour throughout the UK. That goes right down to cities where the music's been listening to and you might find markets that you never actually considered for touring. We also give the artists the ability to custom make their Deezer page as well by uploading their own biographies, their own images, their own banners. We give them the opportunity to upload tracks. You don't have to go on SoundCloud, which doesn't pay you. You can upload tracks yourself and we're actually going to pay you for that. <clears throat> and we're giving you the ability through those activities to connect with your fans. The first artist we've done that with was um, a French artist called Justice for, his life, for their live album. And when we worked with Justice, we weren't allowed to promote it. I said, listen, we're happy to do this, but don't promote it. Let's let it develop organically. And the numbers were staying. I mean, you can argue, yeah, Justice is a huge artist, but it really worked for him. But we can also work for smaller artists. An example is actually an AIM band, Lepers and Crooks, great band. And the um, band approached us, listened to their song. There was a song called Sex Emotion. Sounds like a Chili Peppers song that the Chili Peppers haven't written for 10 years. Amazing. So we featured that. We sat down with management and said, OK, this is what we want you to do with your social media. That's how we want you to reach out to your fan base. We feature it in our editorial pics. We put up a banner. And we were able, through all those combined activities, to put it up to number two on our charts. And we also helped the band to get some kind of global picture as well. So it's, that's really important. The, the human component, you can talk to us, and we can help you setting up promotion. And we love music, and we love new and upcoming arts. We like to discover arts. That's what we're all about. Um, when I worked at the labels, I worked with artists like Michael Jackson and Aerosmith. But that was never the fun part. For me, the fun part of my job was always working with a complete unknown artist and discover and help him to develop a new market. And that's what we breathe at Deezer. It's very important for us to help artists to find their audience through discovery. Um, so we bring artists to a new audience globally, but we also do that by creating an engaging musical experience. And that goes from you know, our recommendation on our homepage, through banners, through playlists, through our two million Facebook um, likes, through Twitter, through our 150,000 strong newsletter in Australia alone, and um, also through offline events where we're filming, recording, and streaming the artists. So there's multiple ways of how we are pushing out artists um, around the world. Um, so very important is music streaming gives you the opportunity to break down barriers. I remember when MySpace was around, there was this whole discussion of, uh, we don't need labels anymore. You know, you, everyone can be a star now. That kind of didn't happen, did it? Um, happened for some, but not for all. But now you really have, through, you actually get the data, and you have the ability to work on different markets. And you use that data to apply for a touring grant. You use that data to find an overseas agent. You use that data to maybe get some airplay on an internet radio station. You use that data to reach out to bloggers around the world, to ask them to feature you, to push you, etc. And it's funny, we were discussing before. Someone said, oh, that makes the job so much easier. It actually doesn't. It makes your job a lot harder because you have to work a lot harder now. There's so many more channels that you have to go through and so many opportunities you can see. That's very important. And you need to be, 
you need to educate yourself with the tools that are available. And you cannot rely on a manager on your label to do that for you. You need to, as an artist, you need to take control of that. We also find in dealings with artists in Australia, as I said before, you know, when, you, when you discuss opportunities of what you can do, the global component of the business is really where it's all about. And that's very important. And you, you, know, you cannot start early enough to work on that. I've seen many bands struggle. You know, once they had already a big profile in Australia, and they said, oh, we should do something overseas. The longer the wait, the bigger you are in Australia, the harder it will be to play in front of 100 people in Germany or in the middle of nowhere in the USA. You know, you really have to engage with an international audience early on. And you have no excuse not to do that anymore. You can do that straight away. <clears throat> OK, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, some insights. Um, you can ask me more questions after, but um, thank you very much. I will take from there.